a high level meeting was being chaired by the indian prime minister to understand the progress of the project gaganyaan he was so enthused by the project he gave certain directives to the department of space to have our own bharti antrikesh station by the year 2035 i have covered that in detail you can find it in the description box the link of it other than this to have an indian on the moon by the year 2040 now we have to trace the history to the race to the moon the 1950s and 60s was straddled with the obsession of the moon not only nations were obsessed with the moon but also bollywood song we have heard so many songs from the 1950s 60s 70s talking about the moon now Do not worry about notes because I provide it through my Telegram channel, Pooja Devi UPSC. If you have any queries regarding this examination, talk to me on my Instagram. So the space race began when the erstwhile Soviet Union sent Sputnik One, the first ever human-made satellite, on the low Earth orbit in the low Earth orbit in the year 1957. The second step was sending mission to the moon. Luna 1 was the first human made object that went to the vicinity of the moon in the year 1959 in order to send a man to the moon we have to know about the topography of it so luna 3 was able to capture photographs of the moon of the far side of the moon specifically president kennedy was not just sitting back he was watching closely the rival getting onto that level so he announced it as a national goal to send a human mission on the moon and hence rest is history we have to know about the history how did the usa get there it wasn't just one mission that took man to the moon it was various it was a culmination of smaller but larger missions smaller in the sense the aim but larger in the sense of the impact So the USA launched Ranger series of hard landers. By the name of itself, you can understand. Hard landing is a situation when the Ranger rovers had to touch the surface without keeping it intact. They could just crash. There were series of heartbreaking crashes. Rangers, the Ranger mission was not going well until Ranger Seven was able to give give us detailed television pictures of Mare Nubium or the Sea of Clouds in July nineteen sixty four. which found out actually that the regolith the soil the loose soil of the moon is because of micro meteorite bombardment of that region so many meteorites bombarded the moon that is why we have this regolith then two more ranger spacecraft flew to the moon in 1965 the most talked about image was from ranger 9 and that was the crater alfonso's crater alfonso's later on another very important region was discovered we have to talk about that as well but still the ussr led the way on that also by soft landing on the moon that india did with chandrayaan 3 and they landed robotic luna 9 spacecraft on the mare plane oceanus procellarum here is oceanus procellarum so luna 9 landed over here soft landing so russia became the first country USSR not Russia specifically USSR became the first country in the world to have a soft landing on the moon with the help of Luna 9 remember that May 1966 the United States sent Surveyor 1 by the name of itself you can understand the ambition to survey the region so this was the first pilot's eye view of the large brightly red crater Copernicus Copernicus crater over here In order to understand the topography, of course, USA had to be more careful. Sending just a spacecraft on the moon is very different in sem if we compare it to sending man to the moon or humans to the moon, because we have to send them to the moon and also bring them back. So it was a much important thing. It was a more complex project, and much importantly, we had to understand how the moon looks, how the moon feels. is it made up of gases is it uh, having any sort of volcanism what is the seismicity of that region how should we prepare the astronauts for staying there so these were the things that the usa had to be very careful about so there it was found out that moon has no global magnetic field or even atmosphere the gravity is almost negligible that is why it is not able to hold an atmosphere then 
the 1968 christmas time flight of apollo 8 was a milestone in which after that may of 1969 apollo 10 orbited the moon first apollo 10 orbited the moon it did not land then neil armstrong and buzz aldrin in apollo 11 made history when neil armstrong buzz aldrin or edwin aldrin buzz he is called lovingly and michael collins these three were the first persons to stay on the moon for a period of time and this was they safely landed in mare tranquilitatis that is sea of tranquility and here is that region what we are talking about so july 20th 1969 stays in our history as one of the largest biggest humongous achievement of the mankind so dark maria they they found out these are ancient volcanic lavas that means there was volcanism on the moon having crystallized over 3.6 billion years ago do you know this particularly very interesting fact that edwin aldrin was supposed to walk on the moon for the first time i mean it was neil armstrong who was the first human being to foot his first step on the moon earlier it was supposed to be edwin aldrin but there were certain issues the thing is that neil armstrong was the commander and according to the protocol the junior pilot who was edwin aldrin he was supposed to be out there first in order to make sure that the commander stays stays safe first they have to go out understand the area then the commander had to come out but the thing is that when apollo opened the sitting arrangement was such that it was very obvious for neil armstrong to be the first person to walk on the moon because there was no way that edwin aldrin would be able to you know come off neil armstrong space and then land on the moon it's not supposed to be like that just the seating arrangement was such thereafter they took care of the entire procedure moving on november 1969 apollo 12 went in the oceanus procellarum that is ocean of storms they it took astronauts peach conrad and alan bean they explored the site in two moon walks okay they saw unusual enrichment in radioactives and rare earth elements thereafter there was an explosion in apollo 13 it prevented apollo 13 landing on the moon because of that so you see usa was doing it time and again apollo 14 was sent to a highland site east of apollo 12 near the ancient crater of fra mauro their astronauts alan shepard and edgar mitchell they conducted two moon walks on the lunar surface and in july 1971 apollo 15 with this nasa began the began the first of the three what were termed as j missions here Lunar module Falcon spent three days on the lunar surface. It was the first mission using a lunar rover. So this is a prelims fact you have to remember. Moving on, Apollo 16 was sent to the ancient crater Descartes, which was deep in the lunar highlands in April 1972. Who were the astronauts John Young and Charlie Duke? They spent three days exploring the site. Another important prelims fact is they operated the first astronomical telescope on the moon. remember these very important achievements the measurement of a very strong magnetic field on the surface was registered apollo 17 was sent to the edge of the mare serenitatis that is sea of serenity in De- december 1972 gene carnan and jack smith smith these were the first two professional geologists to send to uh, who were sent to the moon to understand the topography to understand the kind of geological rocks that are over there they spent 3 days thoroughly exploring the torres litro valley moving on they also brought back 242 pounds of samples three which uh, which tells us that 3.6 billion o- year old organic volcanic ash is there that means volcanism was a big deal for the moon crustal rocks and complex breccias created during the impact of that formed the year serenitatis basin almost 3.9 billion years ago so we understood the age of the moon lavas at this site are over 3.6 billion years old and at least a 700 million year span of lava flooding on the moon happened so that made it very clear that volcanism and seismicity were present on the moon then nasa actually stopped sending man to the moon because of the immense budget that it undertakes to send a man mission to the moon and the kind of expenses that they incur we have to understand it from the indian perspective as well 
the budget for isro is grim we know that and in that budget how we are going to send a man to the moon that is one of the biggest things and which are the countries we are going to collaborate with moving on as i have already told you the history of it now understand the future of manned missions to the moon earlier it was being said that after the launch of the chandrayaan 3 after the proper successful landing of the chandrayaan 3 chandrayaan 4 is supposed to be a sample return mission what is a sample return mission in which we will collect samples from the surface of the moon bring it back to understand moon better if we again if we have to understand the topography if we have to send a person to the moon we have to understand the topography the safety security of that particular place and how we are going to conduct experiments so once we bring back samples we are going to go ahead with other chandrayaan missions as well because sending man to the moon means exploring more about the moon knowing more about the moon so many chandrayaan missions will be there all right like luna similarly chandrayaan we know that luna did not do very well because of the hiatus the space program of russia went through after such a long break they were sending a man uh, sorry a mission to the moon a rover and all to, to the moon but it did not work well so we have to understand that we cannot have a hiatus we cannot have a break similarly for you if you are attempting upsc you cannot have a hiatus in your studies for that very matter because it takes a lot of time to bounce back so currently india is aiming for 2040 but certain experts believe that it could take 20 to 30 years for india to send a human to the moon but india is a part of the artemis accords artemis mission or artemis accords is a group of certain countries that have agreed to be a part of exploring moon among other things so india became the 27th country in the world to become a part of the artemis accords which is a usa led mission it will consist of unmanned moon mission lunar flyby and a human mission to the moon by the year 2025 artemis accords want to ensure that there is at least one person of color that is one non white person and a woman on the moon that is by the year 2025 by 2024 it wants to ensure the space launch system carries at least four astronauts and fly by to the moon that means they will not land they will just orbit the moon and come back and before that in 2022 with the launch of the spacecraft orion artemis accords began itself so india is a part of this india will also take a lot of advantage of the artemis accords okay so i hope you understood this particular section of the directive that the prime minister gave before this i have already covered the bharti antariksh station please do watch both of these to get a better perspective thank you so much for watching